Welcome back, my wonderful people. Now, we're on the next part of this moment's chapter, and it's to do with centres of mass. So, what am I talking about? Well, all the questions that we've looked at so far, um, they've all involved um, a uniform rod. And when we said uniform rod, what it meant is that its weight acts directly in the centre. Okay, so you all know that already. But now what we're going to do is see problems where you've got something called a non-uniform rod. Now, what does it mean? If you've got non-uniform rod, well, obviously, the weight doesn't act in the centre anymore. So it acts somewhere else. So here's an example of it. So if you've got a uniform rod over here, right, um, its weight is acting directly in the centre. So down there. So, you know, you'd put like 50G, 40G, whatever over there. But now in a non-uniform rod, maybe the weight acts over here. This is clearly not the centre of that rod. So it could act over there. Maybe it acts over here. Who knows? But that's the point. We don't actually know where the centre of mass is sometimes. So maybe in some of these questions, you're going to have to find out where it is. Maybe some of them, they'll give it to you. And what you'll see is that it's not at the middle. Okay? Simple. So we'll start with quite an easy example to begin with, and then we'll build it up over the next videos, right? So um, let's get going. Let's crack on. Let's have a, a read of this question. We've got a non-uniform uh, rod AB. So we know the drill, let's just put A, let's put B over here. And it's got a length of five meters. Um, so I guess you could put that whole distance there. That's five meters. And it's got a mass of 25 kilograms. We can't put it in just yet, we don't know where it is. Now it says Jacob, who has a mass of 30 kilograms, is standing on the rod at A. So we've got Jacob, he's over there at A. He's got a mass of 30, G, uh, 30 kilograms, so we need to put a weight of 30 grams. Now it says the rod is pivoted at its midpoint. So it's pivoted over here, bang in the middle. So, you know, like a seesaw. And remember at this pivot, you're gonna have a reaction force going upwards. So make sure you fill that in, don't forget it. Um, that looks good so far. Uh, and it's pivoted at its midpoint, which means the distance either side is obviously 2.5 meters, right? So I guess what we could do is go like that and put 2.5 meters and then 2.5 meters there as well. Uh, let's add some more info. So they then, oh, they gave us the center of mass here. So the center of mass C is located such that AC is two meters. So we can fill that in as well. Um, that means maybe the center of mass is about here. That's going to be 25G and that distance is two meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the arrows I've drawn on here now, right? Because we know that on the left there, that is going to be two meters and this here must be 0 0.5 meters. There we go, just like that. Um, and now who else have you got? We've got Jacob's friend, Ali. Always got to be multicultural and stuff. So Ali, uh, who's made, who's got a mass of 40 kilograms uh, and he's going to stand on the rod uh, at F, okay, to keep it horizontal. Now look, let's just think. If Ali was to stand on this side, obviously that this, this seesaw is just going to tip downwards, right? The beam's just going to go bam. So you clearly want to put Ali on this side, but we don't know where. So we'll just put him somewhere for now. Let's just put Ali... Over there, right? And um, the distance will go from A all the way to there. We'll call it X, because we don't know what it is, right? Uh, and this point that he's standing at is F. Now, what we've actually got to do here is, if you have a read, we've got to actually calculate this distance AF. So, we've got a great diagram. I think what we can do, just to make it a bit easier to look at, is just get rid of this force along the bottom, this uh, distance, sorry, the five meters that we had there. Um, and that looks a bit better. So... Once we've done that, I think we're ready to go. Let's crack on. Now, uh, if you remember, we're going to look up and down. So upwards forces equals downwards forces. So we're going to have R uh, is equal to, well, we've got 30 G here. We've got 25 G here. And Ali, oh, we forgot to add his weight in. Let's add his weight in now. Ali's weight is 40 G. There we go. So we've got 40 G for Ali as well. So we need to add all those forces up together. That's going to be 70, 95 G. There we go. So you've got R is 95G. We might as well fill that in as well on the diagram. 95G. Okay, quality. Uh, next thing we need to do is take some moments. So I'm going to take moments about A. So over here. And remember, if we are taking moments about A, we don't need to include this force down here because it goes through this point, right? And so its perpendicular distance is zero. So hopefully you remember that from the previous videos. Now, the only forces we'll need to consider then is the actual weight of the beam, uh, the uh, reaction force there, and then the weight of Ali over here, right? 
So um, if we're setting up moments from A, this is in equilibrium, right? I mean, this, it's not gonna it's not gonna move. We want it to be perfectly horizontal. If it is, then it means that equilibrium. So what we should do is just set up clockwise equals anti-clockwise. I'm just gonna put anti-clock. That will do. And now the clockwise moments is going to be created by this 25g and the 40g over here. So all we need to do is 25g multiply that by a distance of 2 plus 40g multiplied by a distance of x. So that. And then the anti-clockwise moments is created by this 95g. And that's bang in the middle, right? So we're going to have 95g times by, and that's going to be 2.5 as your distance. So on this side, we've got 50g plus 40gx is equal to 95 times by 2.5. What is that? That's going to give us 237.5g. Bring the 50 over, so take off 50, and we end up with 40gx is equal to 187.5g. We strike out the g's, so we've got 40x is equal to uh, 187.5, and then divide that by 40, and we should get an answer of 4.6875 meters. If we're going to go to three sig figs, uh, let's go with um, 4.69 meters. There we go. So what does that mean? That means Ali is standing at a distance of 4.69 from A. So, you know, a fair bit past the midpoint. Midpoint is 2.5. So he's only actually a little bit, yeah, a little bit from the end of the seesaw, which, you know, seems reasonable, all right? Because there's two forces, um, you know, coming down on this side of the seesaw. So, you know, he's going to have to stand quite far away to create a big enough moment, right? So uh, nice and simple to begin with. Um, hopefully you've got that and uh, stay tuned. The next video, we're going to up the difficulty to a few more challenging questions uh, and then see how we get on with that. Hope to see you there.